So as the Cubs keep playing well and the White Sox pull off a big trade a week ago, Nick Shepkowski gets to be the first second-time guest here on Bogus at the Plate. Hear him, part of the Spiegel and Goff Show, 9-1 to 1 Central Time weekdays on 670 The Score in Chicago. Nick, it's Andrew. How are you again, man? I'm good. I feel like it's an honor to be able to be the first repeat person up here. It yeah. means a lot to me. You're not going to get anything, no trophy, no T-shirt. Just <laughs> It's just an honor thing, so enjoy it. I'll take it as a nice sense of pride then. Uh, so the Cubbies, they just got their 40th win of the season. Aside from injuries, have we figured out a weakness yet for this team? I, I think that if you are, and this is I, how nitpicky I guess you have to be when you're looking for it for a team that's sitting there 24 games over 500 right now, it's who comes out of the bullpen that's left-handed. And that's honest. Like that's the first thing that kind of comes to mind of where the issue is with this team. It speaks to how deep it is offensively. It speaks to how good a defense it's played. It speaks to how good the starting p- pitching has been. I mean, you're looking right now, and everyone talks Arietta, Lester. You're having great years from Jason Hamill, Kyle Hendricks in that rotation. John Lackey had a little bit of a slow start. He's been phenomenal the last month as well. Honestly, when I look at it and I try to figure out what the Cubs are going to do once the trade deadline starts to approach here in the coming weeks and the next couple of months. I think it's going to be bullpen, specifically a left-handed arm out of that bullpen is where it's weak right now. Outside of that, you've seen the lineup enough times through. There's not many weak spots in it. Are we panicking after back-to-back lost Arietta starts? I, I don't think is so. the magic's not watch, gone? <laughs> yeah, if you watch the Arizona game, it was just he called it bad luck and really kind of rewatching it. That's what it was. He didn't get strikeouts when he needed them to, and then sure, that's one thing that can be controlled a little bit better, I suppose. But it was weak ground balls up the middle that happened to find a hole and sneak through that put him in bad positions a couple times. Really, that day against Arizona on Sunday, maybe two hard hit balls all afternoon. They were hit at the right time, and it ended up being a loss for him. But now it's it's hard to be too concerned over what he's done, especially not only just the last year. You see so many stats of the Cubs haven't lost in this amount of time, and Arietta starts. I mean, it's been going for about a year before that too. About the All Star break in 2014 is when he really started to put it together, and he's been downright outstanding. Nick, we've already seen Chris Bryant play third base, first base, shortstop, left field, and right field. Is anything left uh, in the repertoire for him? Uh, last year, we saw him in center field a couple of times. I think in Pittsburgh a few times, he made some starts out there, and he's been nothing short of phenomenal. I mean, you look at he, everyone when Ben Zobris was brought in, oh, that's going to be the guy that's a versatile guy. He can play second base, shortstop if you need him, third base, any outfield position, and that's turned into Bryant, really. And you've seen him be more than okay defensively, but offensively, he's changed his swing up a little bit more this year. He doesn't have nearly the same uppercut that he did last season. You've seen some changes in that, and you've seen his strikeout numbers go down a lot so he's been able to it speaks to how good of a ball player he is of he's been able to make that transition in his swing make some changes and his numbers for the most part stay the same and his strikeout numbers actually improve and he's still a baby which is the the most frightening thing of it all yeah it's, you're looking at a guy that's 24 years old and it's going to get better before anything else uh let's discuss the other the other team in the city they pull off the james shields trade everybody seems to like it because it's fairly low risk where do you think uh, how do you fall on the on the side of the trade well it's low risk for sure and really you see a 17 year old and fernando tatis jr that goes back to san diego in this deal and if it's not fernando tatis's son do we even talk about him if we don't right. recognize the name i think that kind of made some people a little more weary about it than they normally would be it, it's a smart move for the Sox because you look at tatis and he's a guy that is five years away, maybe four years away from playing in the major leagues, and maybe he goes on to do something, maybe he doesn't. But Eric Johnson, giving up on him when he's given his chances here in, in the major leagues, he's what we call the 4A player, ultimately. He's, he's not a starting pitcher. He's struggled time and time again. Maybe he does find success at the major league level, but it's hard to believe that it would be in a White Sox uniform. So not giving up a whole lot in that. Shields, I know it's an aging arm, but the Padres ate a big chunk of that contract. The White Sox have gotten a lot three through five in the rotation this year and you look at that and Carlos Rodon who was drafted third overall just a couple of years ago he was supposed to step in and be the star right away a lot of people thought similarities to sale had this wipeout slider that no one could hit well he can't spot it at the big league level he's been having trouble getting through five innings so far this year and he's been a little bit of a disappointment there four and five spots in the rotation have been a disaster so at least for the time being it's going to be an upgrade at the back end of this rotation that's something the Sox really do need yeah they they need help across the board, it seems like right now. How hot is Robin Ventura's seat? 
I think it's starting to get a little bit warmer. Um, bats aren't helping him out whatsoever. Jose Abreu has been downright d- disappointing this year. Negative war player when you look at all of that. Um, Robin Ventura has a lot of questionable calls here that are getting scrutinized, it seems like, on a nightly basis. Decisions to bunt the other day. Milky Cabrera, who's been the best hitter on this team, at least average-wise, on base percentage-wise, has to drop down a bunt when the, when the Sox have runners in scoring position and give up the out. Well, it's been the hottest hitter so far. If you have a tying run on base, why be giving up outs there with your best hitter up? So that was questionable. He's been doing things like that so far this year. Some use of the bullpen. And I've always said it. You can't uh, – the fastest thing to make a – Uh, manager look bad is going to be poor play from a bullpen because no matter what button he presses, it's going to be the wrong one. And that's kind of where he's fallen into the last couple of weeks here. But offensively, his decisions, Jimmy Rollins has been a disaster offensively. He continues to hit on the two hole pretty regularly on this lineup. So there are definitely signs of Robin Ventura. People getting much more frustrated in the last couple of weeks than, than recently. Nick for a second time. Great stuff. Thanks for coming on. We appreciate it. Anytime. Pleasure to be number the first person to see number two. So that's Nick Shepkowski. Check him out midday, 670 The Score in Chicago. Follow him on Twitter as well, at Shep670. And one last thanks to him for coming on with us this week. Now, one last thing before we go. A couple of weeks ago, we introduced you to Brian Dunnigan, a lifelong Cubs fan who is trying to get Cubs backup catcher David Ross into the All-Star game before he retires after this season. Well, last week, Major League Baseball gave us our first All-Star Game voting update, and the list of the top five National League catchers does not include David Ross. It begins with Yadier Molina, not surprisingly, then Buster Posey, not surprisingly. Then the other Cubs catcher, Miguel Montero, plus Wellington Castillo from the Diamondbacks, and Wilson Ramos in Washington. Now, after that, we have no idea. There's no way to know who is from sixth place on, so maybe it's David Ross, or maybe... He's gotten six votes total. Either way, he's not number one, which is the goal of this movement. So do your part, Bogus at the Plate Nation, and go vote for David Ross at MLB.com. Hashtag write in Ross at RossASG16 on Twitter. With that, we are done. Another week is in the books. One last thanks to Nick Shepkowski and Marley Rivera for from ESPN for joining us this week. For Lori, for Jacqueline, for Matt, for Patrick, I'm Andrew. We'll see you again next time. Bogus at the plate.